steering behaviors. They're great tools for implementing AI in the game development field, but for some reason there seems to be little information about them online. So I'm going to do the research about all the different behaviors I can find. This is Ted. He is going to be our test subject today. Huh? I mean... Volunteer. Right, Ted? Huh? Sadly, he is not very smart right now. Huh? Oh, hey Ted, how are you doing? Ah! Poor Ted. All he knows is to run forever. So to quickly explain, the idea of steering behaviors is to make agents, aka Ted, move in a realistic manner by using forces. These steering behaviors are determined by the environment and other agents. The combination of these forces allows to produce complex movement from simple rules. With that said, let's start with the basics. Seek behavior. We want Ted to go towards a target which can be a point, an object, or even the cursor. The steering force makes Ted change his current velocity to the desired velocity, which points directly at the target, and is calculated with simple vector mass. So Ted is now smart enough to go towards a specific location. He can also follow me. Or the mouse cursor. Flee behavior. Flee is exactly the opposite of seek. So now the desired velocity is away from the target. Ted is now fleeing from me, and he's actually doing it so well that he keeps teleporting between the corners of the screen. That's kinda cringe, Ted. You could make an adjustment so that the targets would only be detected when Ted is at a certain distance from them. It's completely optional though. Arrival behavior. Arrival is very similar to seek, the only difference is that Ted is meant to slow down gradually as he is approaching the target, instead of doing this. So Ted is definitely doing better than before, but this is still not very good. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life! At this point I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make Ted stop at the target. As it turns out, there is a tiny problem with this behavior. The official code implementation applies the steering directly to the velocity, which means for distance 0, desired velocity is 0, and the steering is minus velocity, and once added to current velocity turns it to 0 so the agent stops. However, it's called the steering force for a reason, so I'm gonna try to figure out an unofficial workaround. So Ted now has three modes. It seems to be working pretty well, but frankly I'm not very satisfied with this approach. I feel like there must be a better way to do it, but I'm not sure how. Hi, ah, yes, this is future me. I've come to say that I figured it out. Stick till the end of the video if you want to find out. What's that, Ted? You want to pursue your dreams and evade this mess? Pursue behavior. So pursue is actually similar to seek, but now the targets are moving, so Ted needs to predict where they will be in the future. Hey. Ted will assume the target is moving in a straight line at constant speed. The predicted position would be the position of the target plus the velocity multiplied by the time. The trick is to figure out what time in the future Ted should predict. Let's start with a value of 2, and see how well he is doing. Ted is doing a nice job most of the time, but I can still trick him because his prediction is not very accurate, especially when he is very close to me. 
so Ted's prediction time should decrease relative to the distance from his target, where accuracy is more important. Good job, Ted! Evade behavior. You already know the drill. It's exactly the same as pursue, except we flee the predicted position. What is exciting, however, is that we can see the potential of steering behaviors by combining multiple behaviors. Here, Ted seeks the cursor and evades the scary guy red at the same time. That's pretty cool. I also realized how I can improve the arrival behavior. It's essentially very similar to the original idea of gradually decreasing the desired velocity with a slowing radius that equals Ted's maximum speed. I also decided to just consider the desired velocity as zero if it's already very small. And most importantly, I introduced a time factor so my steering would match force values. A value of 0.1 seems to do the trick. Amazing. I guess I should also use the time factor for the other behaviors. I've got to tell the past viewers about this. Hold on, I'll be right back. Oh, hey Ted. Look at how smart Ted has become. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. There are plenty more behaviors to explore. Next time on part 2. Let me know what behaviors you want to see next.